Happy Tuesday! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So, all right, tonight we are continuing the ABC Stitch Along, and we are starting the Inchworm for the letter I. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you some of our previous ones, like we got the Hedgehog here all finished. Uh, we are well on our way uh, into this alphabet. So, uh, uh, and I've been gone for the past week, so it's so nice to see you guys popping in again. I see your comments, so thank again, thanks again so much for being here. I'm happy to be back. Uh, just to let you know, we are having our special again tonight. If you order uh, $20 or more, you'll get a free mystery gift. You don't need a code. I will just uh, see, if, you, see uh, uh, if the order came in during this time, during our live, and I will put a mystery gift into your order. So thanks again, everyone. It is also uh, the last day of the month. So last day to get our chickens embroidery kit with the free, uh, the, the free nest and tweet uh, quilt pattern. That's the freebie for this embroidery of the month. And then tomorrow we will we'll get a new embroidery of the month because it's June. It's, it's so far into the year already, you guys. So, all right, uh, let's get going tonight. Okay, so hello, hello everyone. I'm gonna scooch you on over. Hold on here a sec. Okay, so thanks again for joining me. So uh, last day for the chickens embroidery kit with that nest and tweet pattern, and we had worked on that. Uh, we worked on that pillow over the weekend, or not over the weekend, but last week, and I finished it, you guys. So here. Here it is finished. I'll have to show you guys again later um, at the end here, so it's a little further away. But I did put the pillow, uh, put it, put it in the pillow, put that cute uh, back fabric on. So I'll have to show you guys that uh, when we're done here. Uh, but I'm just excited I got that done. So all right, we have our inchworm pattern tonight. Uh, we have the uh, the whole pattern. We have the on the back, it has the stitch guide, like what stitches to go where. And we are basically doing the back stitch and the satin stitch for this one. And he's going to be all bright and cute and colorful. We have the traceable pattern, the iron pattern, and then the instructions for the stitches. So, all right, I'm going to get the iron me pattern for tonight. Because uh, I'm going to be ironing the uh, design onto my fabric here. I got my hoop ready. And uh, so we're gonna be doing this guy next, uh, this week is the inchworm for the letter I, and then next week will be the jellyfish, one of my absolute favorite ones. So this is gonna be starting next week on Monday. So, all right, let's do this inchworm. So I have my iron heated up. I am gonna get my pressing mat here. You can use an ironing board. I do recommend putting down a piece of um, paper towel just so then you won't accidentally get the uh, iron-on pattern onto your ironing board. I mean, with my little mat, you wouldn't really be able to see. I'm using a cotton square. Uh, it's an unbleached muslin square. And one thing I need to do, just as a reminder, uh, for you guys, if you're working on this too, remember to cut off that Iron Me text because we don't want that to transfer to, the, to our design. So, all right, here is our design. It is in reverse. You kind of can't tell because, you know, these eyes look the same whether they're in reverse or not. Uh, but uh, the, the little inchworm will actually be facing the other direction. So it's an iron-on pattern. Uh, so when we we're gonna flip it like this, and then it'll be the correct the correct direction. All right. So let's heat up our fabric. I always preheat the fabric first. This is gonna make the design transfer way easier and faster. All right, so let's just do that again quick. All right, so I am going to flip it around and I'm centering it the best I can. 
I do have um, excess around all the sides, so I think we'll be fine. All right, if, it, if I'm like not perfectly center, we'll be fine. And then I'm just gonna set the iron on for about five seconds. I can kind of move a little bit and peek, and it is already transferring really well. Yeah, we're good to go right away. <laughs> so the transfers should last like uh, about five times. So if you wanted to, like if I wanted to do this on my jean jacket or something, uh, I could just use the same transfer and that would totally work. But we are ready to go. And you know what? I actually found a whole pile of, uh, uh, I've been making a second copy of these typically uh, so far just because I, I want to kind of make it into an, an alphabet book too, but I actually found a bunch of finished uh, finished ones from like an earlier stitch session, or I think some some people like stitched them earlier for me. And uh, I think I might have enough to do an alphabet, or I might just need a few more. So uh, I have to check what ones I'm missing, and then I'll make sure to iron those on. But for now, I'm just going to iron on the one. All right, you guys, let's start stitching tonight. Got my hoop, got my instructions nearby so I can see, see the colors and everything. I'm just going to leave it on the front here. And we'll get stitching. Caitlin says, yay, you're back. My nights have been so weird. Oh, <laughs> vacation was fun. Yeah, so I have been out, you guys, for... Uh, gosh, since like Wednesday of last week. So it's nice to be back. It was awesome, awesome, awesome hanging out with family. Got to see Chad, Kitty, and Chad's always so nice and cute. Chad actually, um, it, he looked like a totally different cat. Um, because he is, he's summer Chad now instead of, instead of winter Chad. So in winter, he gets like, he's so poofy, he gets like the roundest, biggest face and now he's back to like skinny triangle face because <laughs> he's just lost all his fur and he's ready for the hot temperatures. All right, I'm getting this guy in the hoop and uh, let's see. I kind of want to start with the outline. I think it'd probably be best actually to start with the satin stitch just because uh, I like doing the edges of the satin stitch last, like, you know, where I can stitch over with uh, a back stitch because then it kind of cleans up, cleans up the edges of the satin stitch. So I think we're going to do the satin stitch first, maybe on this, and then go back around. So this will be fun. A whole pile of satin stitch. Haven't done that in a while. And I'm still kind of working through all my floss. Uh, this is all from, like, one one bag of our pocket skeins embroidery floss so we have like 23 colors uh, i did find when i was cleaning up i did find some more of these uh, little plastic bobbins i couldn't find them for ages but then i cleaned up like all my craft supplies that was an undertaking but i did find uh, um some of those bobbins so i might actually start winding these onto there but uh for now let's just even see if i have these colors left here's some red not that much left of red. Here's a little piece. Um, let's see, red. I think we have enough oranges to pick from. Yeah, you know, I think the question mark will be this red, but I do want to use the red. So let's see, what do we got? Um, I think I'm going to, should we do that satin stitch that we did with the two strands? Because then we can get, um, that really nice those single strands next to each other I think that would be a good idea so let's let's do that oh Kathy said we did feel out of sorts I know I've been gone for a long time it's it's been weird not seeing you guys here every night too <laughs> all right I'm gonna pull my two strands for this so zoop. Uh, normally I'm just using what I have left so this is actually a longer piece than I normally would do but I'm getting greedy we're gonna be greedy with this all right, and here's the next um, strand. I'm gonna do just two strands for the for the satin stitch, I think. Play around with that again. Okay, I am gonna start with an away knot because I 
don't have any um, stitches on here yet. Uh, and a way knot is just a way for me to reserve a piece of thread so I can weave it in, in later. Because um, I like weaving in my ends instead of um, starting with knots or and ending with knots. So I'm going to weave in my ends, but since I don't have any uh, backs of the stitches to weave in yet, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to start with an away knot, which will reserve some thread for later. So I'm just going to tie a knot here. Ugh, you guys, we got to watch movies outside. We got to have um, campfires. It was all just so nice. Played tons of um, Settlers of Catan. <laughs> it was lovely. Oh, Gretchen says, I'm so glad the storms didn't get you all. Oh, so... Sorry for the other Minnesotans. You, I had just, I just heard about that. Like, I didn't even realize we were having all this weather here when we were gone. Uh, when we got home, we could tell that it must have rained a ton by us because our gutters were, like, all cleaned out. Like, all of the, like, little helicopter trees um, were all cleaned out. Um, so, yeah, I don't even know. I'm going to have to check, I'm going to have to check Facebook and, and, like, the news and stuff. I, I know we got a bunch of storms in Minnesota. I think they were a little west uh, of me, but I'm not positive. Uh, Linda says, or one strand. So I, 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 Linda, you might have had an earlier comment. I'm not, I'm not sure, but um, Linda says, or one strand doubled over. Oh yes. So I could have done, I could have done one strand, like taken just one strand out of here and doubled it over. And then we could have done the, the, um, loop method of starting but uh my i i'm using this leftover red that i have and it didn't feel like long enough to do that so we, we did it this way all right so for satin stitch i'm going to start on one side of this this um we're going to fill in this shape here i'm going to start on one side of the shape and i'm going to go to the other side of the straight and then i'm always going to come back so i'm always going to start on this side and i'm always going to end on this side and we can really go we could go at an angle, we could go like straight horizontal. I could actually do this whole thing vertical, but those would be kind of pretty long stitches for a satin stitch. Um, so I think I want to keep them as short as possible. So I think I'm going to just kind of do a little angle, slight angle up here. Maybe we'll like do like the angle of what, whatever the, um, like what's, whatever is perpendicular to, to the inchworm. So like here, you know, our inchworm's kind of like this. So I'll go like, perpendicular to that here he's kind of kind of arced like this so we'll we'll go p perpendicular to that here we'll go you know so we'll just kind of travel around I think so I'm going to start with just a few like guide posts and you'll notice I'm kind of going just on the outside edge of the just the outside edge of that shape um, just so I make sure to like enclose that line with it oh gosh there we go and I'm going to do that like railroading uh, thing. Is that what we called it? Where I put my um, thread in the middle of the, my two strands. So it kind of keeps them a little separate before putting, uh, putting my needle down across the other way. So now when I pull my thread through those lines, those two stitches should be laying right, 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 right next to each other. Um, instead of like twist it all up. So that's good. I kind of like that. You know what? I think I'm going to actually draw my lines in. I think that'll be a little bit easier for me. So now that I have like one in, I'm just going to take a, a pencil here. You can use a water soluble marker, but you know, we're going to be covering it up. So I think it'll be fine. I'm just going to put in just so I can keep this angle the same. I'm just going to try and put in a few more guide posts that I think I'm already getting the angle off, but I think that's good enough. So that's going to just help me. So I'm going to start start um, my stitches on those lines, and then maybe I'll do like halfway in between, and then we'll we'll fill it in from there. All right. So starting all the way on the outer edge of that line, and then we'll do that railroad thing again, where I stick my needle in between the two threads, and then come up. That pencil line's really helpful. And I'm on the outer edge then again. And zoop, there we go. That's looking cute. 
And let's just do that for the rest of my guide posts. And then I'll, I don't know, start at the top and come down, I guess. Ooh, and I have a question for you guys. I've been, I've been thinking about it a couple days. <laughs> and um, I wanted to hear if you guys have heard this phrase before. So uh, my um, brother's girlfriend, girlfriend's family, or girlfriend was um, with us for the holidays. And her family has a phrase called, uh, um, like, when, when someone's just, like, always working or always doing something or always has to be like doing something. Uh, she call her family calls that person a fart in a hot skillet. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, all weekend, you know, my John and my dad always had to be doing something, always had to be like up and at something. So we kept, we kept calling them farts and hot skillets and there's, they're just like, there they go, the hot farts again <laughs> in the skillet. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we just thought it was so funny because we've never heard that phrase before. So we were, we were just using it all weekend. So let me know if any of you guys have heard that before. Um, a fart in a hot skillet. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. But yeah, sounds southern. I think they're from they're from uh, Washington, so not southern. I don't think I think she's always been there, so I don't think they came from the south. But it does kind of sound like some southern phrase. <laughs> anyway, oh that one I made super crooked. I think I'm going to take it out. Let's be picky tonight. I'm going to take that one out. He's he's a bit crooked. And actually, on that note, I think I might just draw some more lines in here with the pencil. That's uh, that's actually working really well for me just to follow the lines. So I think I'm going to add like an in-between of each of these. And then I think that will be enough of a guide um, for myself for the satin stitches. Then I can just kind of fill in the blanks. And these guides are just so I can attempt to make um, these lines as parallel as possible. You could actually take a ruler and, and sketch all these in, but meh, I'm not getting all that hardcore. Oh, Lori says, I'm from Iowa, and I've heard that my whole life. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, that's fun. Okay, so it's in Iowa and Washington so far. Fart in the hot skillet. Oh, God. And then the first time, like, this is the second time, you know, we, she's she's told us this before, but, it, you know, it's come up again. Uh, and uh, I just remember it took me a hard time to remember the exact phrase. So I'm like, the hot fart in the cast iron pan? Like, what is it again? <laughs> but nope, fart in the hot skillet. <laughs> We are we are saying variation variations of that like all all weekend, but they did get a lot of stuff done. Those those hot farts, uh, they uh, um, they got a bunch of trees from I don't know like an Arby, Arbor Day thing or what are they, the Audubon Society. Uh, so they got a bunch of like little baby pine trees from there and so they they planted all those and um you know they they uh john went kayaking one of the days and just all sorts of stuff working on working on things not all not all not all play oh they they put up like the sails on the deck so just like you know some of those fabric you know sails that you can put on a patio so they block block the sun a little bit they got those up. They got some garden stuff figured. Oh, that's it. Okay, so Katie, <laughs> perfect. All right, so so Katie, who's uh, my brother's girlfriend, she's on YouTube. She's saying my great grandma was from Iowa, so maybe it is an Iowa. Maybe it's an Iowa phrase. Oh God. Okay. So far. So far, it's claimed by Iowa. 
I have some friends from Iowa. I'm, I'm going to have to see if that's uh, if they've heard that before, too. That's so funny. Heart in a hot skillet. So this does take a little bit longer doing the sand stitch where I kind of split it in the middle, but I think all my stitches are going to lay super flat and nice next to each other. It'll almost be as if I did uh, one strand, which is like how if you're stitching with one strand for um, a satin stitch, that's when you're getting like the silkiest, like every single stitch lays in, in line perfectly. Um, that's... Uh, that's like sometimes when sand stitch can work the nicest. So we're, we're kind of getting that effect by doing this little split. So all right, there, I mean, this is kind of cute like that. We could just leave it like that, but we're gonna keep going. Um, so let's just now start filling, filling this in. And actually, I think I might just split this one in half again because it's kind of big. But now I think it'll be easier for me to get parallel because I can just estimate it a little bit. There we are. All right, and now let's just start filling in this whole thing. I don't have to be so precious with the edge at the bottom here because I'm going to be stitching, uh, stitching this with um, like outlining it with with the green yet. So I'm I don't have to like if there's a little space that's going to be fine because that's going to be covered up. Yeah, so now I'm I'm just going right next to the last stitches and filling in the space. I think this one could use one tiny more. But yeah, if I would have just started stitching from one edge to the other, I mean, you totally can, but I just feel like I'm, I would like, my lines wouldn't be super parallel. They'd kind of like creep up this way or creep up this way. And then you'll kind of get, you kind of see that, that it's shifting a little bit uh, this way by putting in all these guide posts. I kind of call them guide posts. I don't know what they're called. Little guidelines uh, that, that helps me keep the whole thing um, a lot more parallel. Because the thing with satin stitch, what makes it so nice is that every stitch is laying perfectly next to each other, uh, parallel to each other, because then when the light hits it, it looks basically satiny, like it looks just shimmery all in the same, same direction. So uh, that's, that's why it's nice to have satin stitches all nice and parallel. Like, look how pretty that looks so far. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but like, you know, in the light, you can, it just looks just so clean and pretty. And it just kind of shifts a little bit when you, when you turn it in the, in the light. I can imagine like if you did this with like a metallic thread or something and everything's just laying all perfectly next to each other it would be so cool. Oh, Gretchen. <laughs> Gretchen, that's funny. Gretchen says, it's so funny to think we know your voice as so familiar and, and you don't know our voices and accents. I know. Uh, oh, man, I don't know what I'd do if, if you guys changed your pro profile pictures. I know it's every once in a while you guys change your pro profile pictures. I'm like, oh, wait, that's uh, so-and-so again, which is kind of funny. But I know, isn't that goofy? this Ooh, and just a reminder you guys we're gonna do we're doing that special again just because it's awesome that you guys are watching live i do appreciate that a ton so uh, we are doing a special that if you ordered uh 20 dollars or more from the shop from penguinandfish.com i will add a mystery gift to your order uh, no code necessary at all or anything like that. I, I'm just going to do it f um, for those who are watching live. So if you order during this live, um, I will, you know, it's it's timestamp. So I'll be able to see if you ordered uh, during the live. And I will put one 
put a mystery gift in your order. And we do have embroidery of the month tomorrow. So I will be switching over uh, the chickens. I will be switching over our embroidery of the month uh, to June's embroidery of the month tonight uh, after our live here. So I'll be switching, doing that switch over at 10. And uh, um, all the needle miners haven't come quite yet. I, I was just thinking, man, I should call them up and see like where things are at because it does feel like that's been a long time for the needle miners. But yeah, so um, after, after today or after at like um, 1030 or whatever, 10-ish 10, 10 tonight, not 10-ish, it'll be 10. At 10 tonight, I'll be switching over the embroidery of the month uh, to June's. And so if you do place an order tonight and you've subscribed to our embroidery of the month and you want me to ship it all together, uh, I can do that as well. So I'll just, um, just uh, in the notes section, like when you check out, just say, I want to ship it with my embroidery of the month subscription or something like that. And I will, I will see that and, um, I will put your whole order together and refund shipping stuff if it if it's um if there's any shipping. There's free shipping over uh, over sixty bucks, so I will refund that if I ship it all together. If there's um a shipping charge on a different part of it, so. Stay tuned this week. New embroidery, and I'll be shipping them all out as well. All right, I'm going to jump up to this next line here. I'm not sure I'm going to have enough um, thread to finish this satin st stitch. I think it's going to be close. We're going to be playing some thread chicken for sure uh, to get up to the top here. But the good thing is... I definitely have enough red because I, like I was nervous if I'd have enough red total for this, but this is, I'm still only on my first two strands. So um, even if I run out of these two strands, I have like the four strands left of, of that, what's left over of my red floss from this whole project, the ABC project. And I got more. I just was wondering how far I could get with like one, one um, batch of, of floss and we we've, we've been like veering away from from the patterns too for this project so like you know when we've done the turkey work tails and stuff that takes up way more floss uh than usual and, and that sort of thing so this isn't a great depiction of like can you finish these 25 animals uh, or 26 animals with um with one one pack of floss we've been like playing around a little bit but it's still half an experiment let's say not a very good control for the experiment but still fun to see and i am you know this is looking crazy my little uh, strawberry guy with um all the floss i think we've used um all of them now so i don't have any of the papers for them anymore but i did like i said earlier i did find some of those plastic bobbins i knew i had a bunch of these somewhere and i cleaned up all my craft supplies, everything's so organized now. It's so beautiful. I love it so much. <laughs> it wouldn't look beautiful to anyone else. It's just a bunch of organized plastic bins. But still, I was able to find uh, those bobbins. So I might, I might wind those on um, tomorrow. We'll see if I get to it. But that'll feel good. So those bobbins, I know not everyone likes those... Um, that style of bobbin because it does put like a little bit of a crease in your in your thread as you you know if it's on there for a long time but eh. I'm not sure I'm not sure that matters very much to me I suppose if I was doing like a really nice satin stitch like this and I had a bunch of little creases in it I think that would be a little bit annoying but at worst if you are super worried about that you could probably run it underneath and iron your your thread before doing it but I'm 
I like the idea of seeing them all clean and organized on those bobbins. I think that one's that's feeling better to me than having that big, massive crazy. Oh, Gretchen says I like the ones that you can write on. The plastic ones you can't. Yeah, there there's some um, there's some cardboard ones. Uh, I like the cardboard ones. What I usually do, and I, I, I guess I'm not for this one, but I actually like sticking the, let's see, do I have any of those left? No, I threw those out. Um, but I like sticking the, the paper, um, you know, like when you pull that little piece, that paper loop that's on uh, holding your floss together, I like pulling that out, the one that has the name on, and sticking it underneath, like on the bobbin, and then winding my thread around the bobbin. So I kind of like doing that way. Then I always have, you know, and then sometimes I can have the number peek out. So that's that's kind of how I do it. I just, that's probably not perfect. I'm sure that could fall out and and all that, but um, I kind of like doing it that way. For this, I'll just wind them around. See how far we can get with them for this project. Then I'll probably just turn the rest into pom poms if we have left over. I love I love like having uh, extra floss from these projects to make pom poms. All right, I I do not feel confident in my thread chicken abilities for the night because I only have this much left. I do not think we are gonna make it, which is a bummer. Cause ugh, I, well I still probably have about ten stitches or so. I think I'm gonna do. Let's see if I can get the two more that go here. And I did have the itty bittiest bit of red left. I'm kind of wondering if that can get me. Oh gosh, no, that's super small. I wonder though. This this might. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how far we can go. <laughs> I got like. I can't believe I saved that piece. Uh, that's like barely a piece of 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 thread. But seriously, if we just need like three more little bits. I think we're gonna need more than that. But ugh. I could have probably stuck another one in the middle there, but I think it's actually looking pretty decent. Just smooth some of these out a little bit. You can just kind of like run your needle underneath that a little bit and, and shape them a little bit too. Just like shimmy sham them like that. Kind of gets 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 them all in line a little bit more. It's looking pretty nice though. I, I think this uh, is turning out good. They're all pretty in line there. Uh oh, I, that felt funny. Let's see. I feel like I'm losing my thread here. I think we're fine. Oh my gosh, I'm tempted to use that tiny piece that I have left over. Oh my god. All right, let's I think this is going to be my last stitch with this thread. Oh god, I really want to do more. These these stitches are so small, so it's actually getting a little easier to do to like, you know, I don't need a ton. My god, maybe we'll win thread chicken. Oh my gosh, I'm going to try and get thread chicken with this piece right here. Like normally I'd probably add a few more little stitches in here, but I think they're getting pushed together just fine. Oops, I'm having a hard time seeing where to go. Right there. Ah, we are totally just using this one thread with thread chicken. Yay! <laughs> uh, and I gotta remember, I I will be stitching that green, that back stitch over here, so I don't even need it this part to be perfect. So I think I'm just gonna do one more right here. And calling it with the red sand stitch. I didn't even need to use my tiny little extra piece. <laughs> Yay. Oh gosh, I think I do need one more stitch in there though. Ugh. Don't want to lose it. I'm barely going to have enough thread on the needle here. Just enough to weave it in. There we go. Hey, hey. Oh, Robin, thank you so much. 
which uh, Robin said she ordered. I appreciate that so much. There, okay, I'm gonna weave in the end. And again, what Robin's talking about is order $20 or more from the shop and I will throw in a mystery gift if you uh, order during this live. So I will be on um, till 9.30 tonight. And if you, if you are subscribed to our embroidery of the month, because we're switching over embroidery of the month um, tonight at 10 as well. Uh, if you want me to ship um, your order tonight uh, with your embroidery of the month, just uh, send me a note um, or put a note in your order. I need scissors. A note in your order and I will uh, combine, combine your orders. Boop. Oh, did I see? I didn't. I didn't see your. I just saw the one just now, Robin, that said that you ordered. I didn't see the earlier one. I don't think. Ooh, okay. Uh, Gretchen says Netflix update, rom com, perfect pairing, Australian and very cute. Oh, think Hallmark. All right, good. I need a few good, like easy peasy things to watch coming up. I'm out of TV again. Oh, a Lincoln Lawyer you liked. That sounds familiar. Have they been advertising that one lately? I feel like maybe that one's been popping up in my uh, feed. Oh, okay. Robin, um, will do. I will combine. I'll combine yours. Thanks for letting me know. I, I, I definitely will. Did I get both of these threaded? Yeah, okay. So this, I just snipped that um, away knot that we started with at the beginning. And uh, um, now I can thread that and weave that in as well. And I think we'll get started on the next color tonight. Um, we'll definitely not finish the whole um, segment. Just enough. But I'm very happy that we got this first one done tonight. For sure. Okay. Uh, scissors. Oop. Okay. Let's see. Cute. All right. So here's it. Um, a little closer, closer for you guys. <laughs> all right, I think it's looking really fun. It's nice and smooth. All the stitches are laying really close and nicely uh, to each other, like almost as if we did it with like single stitches. So that's, I think that's the technique that I'm going to use for the rest of this too, is um, the single or the, the two strands that I split, like do that railroading thing in the middle. So, all right, next up. Um, you know what? I'm going to start with a, another away knot, too, because I don't have any uh, stitches to really weave in for the new color. That's why I usually like doing an outline first, because then I can weave into the backs of those stitches. But in this case, I do like doing the satin stitch where I, you know, have the edge that I can stitch later with that other stitch. Because like you, like you can see here, it kind of my back stitches kind of cover up the edge. Um, so I'm going to do the back stitch last in this case, which is a little different than normal, um, than what I normally do. But all right, let's uh, pick an orange. So I think when I originally did this design, I think it was probably that goldenrod color. But I think in this image here, it looks a little bit closer to the tiger lily color, which is this. And I think I have more of it. So I'm going to use tiger lily. Uh, for that second color and I'm gonna get like kind of a longish piece um, kind of like how the red was a little bit long although this this section is way bigger than this section so maybe I'll just go for my normal normal bit um, I'm gonna use the two strands in the way knot, I think though so let's this is a little bit longer than normal maybe like I don't know I might be at 30 inches or so and I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to get my two strands out and um, do the way knot. Boop, boop, boop. 
like bop in the end because then it separates all those threads. Oh, you guys, my mom has been making like such pretty tatted um, items lately, like little tatted bookmarks and these like little coasters and, and they are just so pretty. She's getting that um, Lisbeth, that's what it's called, like that Lisbeth tatting thread. And the colors, like she's getting, you know, the variegated thread colors, they're so saturated and bright and pretty and the things that she's making are just so cute and I, and I really, really, really want to start tatting again. So we might, we might have to pick up our snowflake projects again, do some of that, finish that up. But yeah, I really want to do more tatted stuff. All right, grab my needle. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right. I'm going to grab some water quick. Hold on. All right, whew. I've been yammering all weekend and I think my voice is about done. Oh, Catherine says tatted coasters sound neat. Yeah, it's just nice cotton thread and she's using the size 10, which is um, like the nice thick ones. So, you know, she's basically making like mini, mini doilies about this big and they're like perfect for coasters. They're so cute. And the colors are just so pretty. Okay. All right, let's do the away knot again. So I'm just gonna tie a little knot here. <clears throat> Ooh wee man. All right, so let's get started. Um, you know what? Let's just draw the lines on right away. That worked so well last time. So now I'm gonna kind of go. I'm gonna kind of keep shifting, uh, the direction of these. I think I'm like I said. I'm earlier. I'm gonna go kind of perpendicular to. I'm gonna actually kind of go parallel to the shape of of the worm so the inchworm so as he's like going up this way I think I'm going to do that same sort of angle so maybe like so so let's put some more so I'm just drawing these in just to um, make sure that these are sort of parallel just so that when I stitch them they'll all be like nice and parallel too all right, I'm going to have them just so I get a few more in there. That was helpful, I think, having more. One there. And I think these will be my guideposts. So I think this time I'm going to just, you know, this time I did like them far away and then the ones in the half coming back this way and then all the way back up. I think I'm going to start from this side this time and get all of these and then we'll just fill in the gaps on the way back that way. So I think that will work. All right, and I'm gonna go from this side to this side. So I'll always start on this side and always end on that side. All right, away not, we're gonna go all the way over here. So this is reserving the thread for later to weave in um, so we can weave it in later. And remember, I'm going just on the outside of my line, so I, so I also cover up the line. And then I'm going to the opposite end. Ooh, Robin, I'll have to ask. She might be able to do something like that. All right, and I'm doing that railroad. Oh, that didn't quite work that time. 
didn't quite split it perfectly, but just I just ran my um, needle through there, and now both both are laying perfectly next to each other like that. All right, splitting that thread again. Going to the other side, following that pencil line that's working well. So these are wider stitches than um, than the red, and I think normally I probably wouldn't do satin stitches any wider than this, because if your satin stitches get too big, like if they're like really big, um, the thread isn't just going to, it's not going to lay flat anymore. It's going to be a little bit more wiggly. Um, you know, you might be able to like get a finger underneath there and stuff too. Uh, so the smaller space that you're filling in with satin stitch, the better. For larger spaces, um, I think maybe a short and long stitch probably works a little bit better. It's not going to look quite as satiny, but uh, the stitches will all lay flat and nice next to each other. And it'll fill in the space with color still. But yeah, so this is about as wide as, as I would go, I think. Okay, two more, and then we'll start filling it in. I like having those guideposts. But yeah, with these long stitches, I think we're definitely going to need long stitches in a larger area that we're filling. I'll, I'll need, I'll need, um, uh, I will need uh, more floss for sure, I'm thinking. For sure. But it'll get us a ways there. Okay, I think we'll just go right next to this and I'll go all the way to the edge and then I'll come back and fill in. Uh oh, that felt wrong. Yep, I got a little knot on the back. So usually for these knots, I like putting my needle right in that loop. These are those like loopy knots that can happen in, in embroidery. And I'm just going to pull on one side or the other of, of the thread. And one of these, if I pull on one of these threads, this one or this one, one of them is going to make the knot go right up to the needle. That's the one I want to find. So I'm going to pull that there. Now my knot's right up against the needle. Now I can take my um, needle out and then I go underneath and I can just pull it's just like a little loop that happens. There we go. We should be good to go now. It was just being a jerk butt. Okay, a couple more down here. Yeah, she's been tatting um, a few bookmarks, and she's really liking liking the bookmarks. Um, and they're so pretty, uh, the book, bookmarks, too. And I think that's a pretty common uh, tatting use, I suppose, is to make bookmarks. And I, I, thought, um, I thought they'd maybe be a little f too thick in a book, but um, they, don't seem, they don't seem bad at all. They seem like the perfect thickness... Um, for a book, like they're not too poofy or anything, like they, you know, leave a weird mark in your book or something. So they're very cute. So I'm gonna have to try making one of those too, I think. This is a fun, bright color. Oh, definitely. Gretchen says, I wonder if tatting would make cool embellishments on shirt sleeves or something. I mean, they definitely, uh, I think traditionally, uh, 
tatting was definitely used as like an edging for uh, for for clothing. Oh, Amy says I've seen some pretty tatted crosses too. Yeah, that's the those are super popular for sure. Just a little extension of uh, the bookmarks, really. Or it's, so it seems. One more. I could, I mean, it wouldn't hurt me for sure if I drew another line with the pencil in the middle of all these. Um, I'd be doing a little less guesswork, but actually I'm not veering too far from the, the line doesn't seem like I'm veering one way or the other at all. So I'm probably okay without drawing extra lines in. It would make it a little easier for me maybe, but it seems to be working. So I think I am almost done with this thread. So I think I will go till I use up this, this thread tonight. And then um, I think we'll call it for the evening. And that will be good. So tomorrow we will pick up on this orange. So maybe we can get this orange and a whole nother one done. So yellow is the next color for up here. Our little rainbow worm, so cute. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I'm thinking we can get maybe the yellow and the orange done tomorrow. So let's just, I'm just, I, I'm always trying to think of like, okay, how long is this going to take? So um, we did about one and a half of these in a day. So let's assume we'll do another one and a half. So that's, oh, it's already Tuesday, you guys. So this will be Wednesday. Dang. Okay. Thursday, Friday. So we might, we might go and we have the letter I yet here too. So this one might, we might, uh, have to go a little longer to finish. So we'll see. So maybe if we don't finish, um, by Friday, maybe on, um, I think Monday we'll still start the jellyfish the letter J. I'm pretty excited about that one. Uh, but if I don't think that one will take all week. So um, if we haven't finished this one, then we'll go back and finish it after we're done with the jellyfish. Ooh, I'm just trying to split these. Oh, that's my problem. I got, it's not splitting. I think I put the needle through the thread in a different spot. So it's being, being cranky now. So we're gonna have like a little weird little knot in there, but I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't think you can see that. And I think that's it for the thread here. So I'm gonna weave in the end. And you know what? I think I'm gonna keep this away knot there until I have more stitches uh, at the end here to weave in. So uh, so tomorrow we'll weave into the same sp space that I am now. I'm not trying to like pull too hard when I'm doing this weaving in either. This is probably isn't the best idea to be weaving into the back of the satin stitch because I don't really wanna affect what the front looks like by pulling too hard, but I'm thinking we'll still be okay. Let's take a look. Yeah, this is just looking so cute so far, I think. Trying to keep it stretched nicely in here so I'm, there's not too much bunching. Like, it'll bunch a little bit. Um, I could put like a stabilizer. I never think about that. I, I need to order a stabilizer, but I you could put like a stabilizer behind the whole thing and then um, it would get rid of some of the little puckering, but I think we're looking pretty good. Oh, Hi Crafting says it's fine to weave in the back of sand stitch. I do it all the time. Ooh, awesome. <laughs> I, I love the sand stitch. I think it's just turning out so cute, especially doing that little railroad technique. Uh, it does look, um, it is looking like we're laying everything um, next to each other super duper nicely. So like I said, I am going to come back to that away knot later um, when I'm done with the next next bit, um, the next whole section, because then I can weave in uh, the ends to, like this isn't much to weave into, so I'm going to wait till I have that more. Sometimes I, when I'm doing these, I have away knots all over the whole thing. Like I'll just um, start um, here and there all over, and then I'll weave them all in later. Um, so that's, that's the plan. 
All right, you guys, I think that's good for tonight. So like I said, I think um, tomorrow we'll get the rest of the orange and the yellow done. And then, uh, gosh, maybe, f wait, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, gosh, yeah, we're going to be like really, really crunched for time on this one. So yeah, if we have to come back next week for this, that'll be fine. But yeah, so uh, tomorrow we'll finish the next two. And I'm hoping maybe we can do the two on Thursday. That'd be ideal because then Friday we can do all of the stitching around, like all of the back stitches, and probably get started with the um, satin stitch on the letters too. So much satin stitch in this inchworm, but I love it. It is so bright and colorful, like our cute little rainbow inchworm dude. Uh, all right. I'm happy with our progress, you guys. Uh, so that is the plan. So just letting you guys know again, um, there's a few more minutes left here. If you order uh, $20 or more, uh, I'll throw in a mystery gift free into your order uh, during this live. And I'll wait a little, a little while after it. And then uh, remember, it's the last, last day for our embroidery of the month. Uh, so we'll be switching this over to June's. I'll be doing that at 10 o'clock tonight. So there's another half hour or so on that. And uh, that is that. So let me flip you guys around. All right, so thank you guys again. Uh, just again, I will be here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow, and we will work on our little inchworm some more, so more satiny stitches for us coming up. So it's been awesome seeing you all again. I know it's been a while. Um, oh, have I named the worm? Amy's asking if I've named the worm yet. Uh, Ian, Ivan, Ingrid. Oh my gosh, I kind of like Ingrid. <laughs> I don't know, we'll have to think about that. that that'd be cute. I do like Ingrid. All right. <laughs> nice. Uh, so awesome, everyone. I will see you tomorrow again at 8.30 p.m. Central for June. It's going to be June tomorrow. <laughs> I'm happy to be back, though. It's nice chatting with you all again. Uh, so all right. Have a lovely, lovely evening. Good night.